So I know what you're thinking. How did this thing end up here? Well, some of you may know, my wife and I live here, and on a day like today, decision making can be tough. In other words, we love to fish, however, on a warm February morning, sitting on a beach doesn't sound too bad. Now, there's an old saying that says you can't have your cake and eat it too, and in some cases, that may be true. But in the Florida Keys, possibilities are endless as we set out to take full advantage of the day in order for this story to unfold. It is 10.07, we have been out here since early this morning and we haven't had any luck. And this is one of those days where you start to think to yourself if it's even gonna happen. And to make matters worse, we spent about $6,000 on an electric reel. So <laughs> I'm kind of freaking out right now and hoping that we haven't had a bunch of beginner's luck, but I'm pretty confident we just keep on doing what we're doing there is a pretty good chance that we can still catch a swordfish today i mean it's still so early in the day and that's really the biggest thing is just coming out here and staying persistent at it we've actually explained this rig in a couple of our swordfish videos but basically you're gonna drop okay basically we have this long 250 pound wind on leader and then there's three lights that are attached to that and those lights are attached just to attract a swordfish because it's pitch black down there. Right now, specifically, we're at 1,600 feet. And what's so insane is we're bottom fishing right now. Swordfish at night, they actually come up and they feed on top, but during the day, they go down to the bottom. And we're gonna give it our go and see if we can come up with one today. Hope it happens. Sword fishing is definitely not cheap. It costs a lot of money to come out here and fuel. And not to mention this entire setup right here is pretty pricey. We started out with a really small electric reel, which I suggest a lot of people should do. We caught two swordfish off of our little tiny Beastmaster reel. We've done a ton of deep dropping with it, but the last time we came up here, we kind of just decided, hey, since we're coming out here and doing this so much, let's go ahead and just beef up our gear a little bit. And that's exactly what we did. This right here is what they call an LP. And basically this is one of the best electric reels that you can buy. There's a couple other great options out there that are just as good. But as far as what we have set up here, it's obviously on a bent butt. We have 65 pound braid and the reason why we go so light on the braid is because we want that thin diameter to cut through all 1500 feet of water that we have below us. You see if that diameter is thicker, it's going to kind of move through the water a little more sluggish per se. If You're we getting a bite. Are we? Yeah. Oh, yes. And then of course we have our Key Largo custom rod. You guys know us. We are hooked up. You're hooked up. We are hooked up on another swordfish. Oh fish my god! As we are filming, and this one is a beast. beast. We have a big swordfish. Okay, Clay, on. put it up to three. Put it on three. It's it's right there. Okay, so that's about everything you guys need to know as far as what? the setup. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Sorry, I hit it's you in the okay. head right there. Well, here it is, sword fishing at its finest hours of boredom which make up for absolute chaos especially since we just pulled the hook on a swordfish about 10 minutes before this hookup very few people are able to understand this fishery and in all honesty i was one of them driving out to 1500 feet is the easy part but the struggle to recognize what a swordfish bite actually looks like is imperative when a swordfish feels tension from the rod we'll spit the bait and move on therefore the way that we hook this fish typically doesn't happen what makes the bite so difficult to recognize is the 12 pound weight weighing down the rod coupled with the current pushing up against the fishing line, which creates load. 
With that load on the gear, it doesn't allow the rod tip to move and twitch in order to recognize the bite with ease. Learning and recognizing that bite takes hours, days, sometimes even months of staring at a rod tip. With that being said, catching a swordfish definitely is not for the weak and impatient. He's swimming the weight up. He's swimming the weight up. We got him on, he's swimming the weight up. Seriously? I don't know, this is this is very, very weird right now. The reason why is because the rod just went slack as I was reeling up on it. And that leads me to believe that we hooked the fish and he's swimming up with the weight. So I don't know. We're gonna have to see what happens here. I'm kind of lost for oh, words. Oh, see, look, now it's not. We were getting a bite originally. Yeah, we don't have a fish. Ah, uh, we don't have a fish. At least I don't, yeah. Yeah, that is slack. <sighs> other one, other one. Mm. That was the weirdest thing, man. It is, it does feel like something's on it. Nothing heavy. Yeah, there is something on there. What is it? I don't know. We got a fish on. Sword! I knew we had something on there. Look at that! <laughs> wow, man. Look at how lit up he is. Just let him stay right there. God, he's hooked perfectly, too. Wow. So 33. That's 33. Okay. Hold him. Hold him down. I got him. 51. <laughs> got him, baby. What's so crazy about this fish is if you look at him, he's so lit up. Because that was probably what? About a 10 minute fight? Yeah, which is unheard of for us at least. Exactly. At first what had happened was is I was getting a bite and then all of a sudden the line just went slack. Mm -hmm. Most people would probably think, oh, you know, I lost my entire rig. And then the next thing you know, he just went airborne out of the water, which is really cool. Yeah, and I just was not expecting that. <laughs> and like looking back on it, I was like, what? Yeah. Like I thought we definitely had like either a squid on or, or a palm frit or something. Something else besides this. And there's no need to kill more because the biggest thing is, is we like making sure to save what's out here, mm -hmm. and that way we can come out here another day and catch another one. But until another day. I'm so excited to eat this, baby. I know, I'm pumped too. Woohoo! Something that's really cool about living down here in the Keys on the ocean, you never know what you're gonna see. If you look out on the distance, I think they're called paragliders. It's a guy up there wearing a parachute and he has a, a gas motor with a propeller attached to his back. I can't even imagine the view that they're getting right now. Nice! Quality over quantity. I'll take it. Sweet! So it's a day later. Yesterday we finished with everything at like four o'clock. We only had an hour left of sunlight. So really what we wanted to do is save the rest for today. Mm -hmm. And it looked like it was going to be nice. And it turns out the weather man was bad. actually right. <laughs> yeah, it's not bad. A little bit of cloud cover, but actually too much sun could be a bad thing. That's why we own a clothing company, Avail Gear. <laughs> yeah. You can see this is one of our new shirts. And if you guys want to get what's already on there, go ahead, hit the link down in the description below. And also, got to shed a little light on my wife here. If you guys are looking for a home down here in the Florida Keys, she is also a real estate agent, so she can find you that dream home. But today, we're putting the dream together. We got the swordfish, we filleted them up, then we're going to head to a beach back in the bay, we're going to cook it up and just enjoy the rest of this beautiful weekend that we have down here in the Florida Keys. Mm -hmm.
Somewhere on a beach, cooking something strong. Got the same girl, but she's got it going on. <laughs> <laughs> so this right here is actually a pumpkin swordfish, or if it's not, it's pretty close to it. There's actually two types of swordfish you can catch. There's a regular swordfish that kind of has like a wider meat. And this is, I'm assuming what's called a pumpkin. A pumpkin swordfish has like an orange tint to the meat. And they say that's all based off of their diet. But rumor has it that a pumpkin swordfish is supposed to taste a lot better than a regular swordfish. And like I mentioned, as it is, swordfish taste delicious. So I'm curious to see how the pumpkin sword tastes. Mm -hmm. Is that your happy dance? Oh yeah, this is delicious. Very good. I actually like this recipe more than the first one I did on the channel. I agree. What's really cool about this too, is I can see you putting this on chicken, the mm -hmm. same exact marinade. Best part is, this is ours for the rest of the day, baby. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. A boat can help you do things and take you places that most people could never imagine. Couple that with the Florida Keys and life is just different. The tension we may face in everyday life just doesn't exist, which is a common way of living down in the islands. We find excitement through endless opportunities, which is how the swordfish ended up on this beach. <laughs> 